Democrats convene at Chicago to elect presidential and vice presidential nominees and to formulate one of the most important programs of foreign and domestic economy ever faced by the American people. It is no great surprise when Senator Alvin Barkley of Kentucky nominates President Roosevelt. I present to this convention for the office of President of these United States, one who is endowed with the intellectual boldness of Thomas Jefferson, the indomitable courage of Andrew Jackson, the faith and patience of Abraham Lincoln, the rugged integrity of Grover Cleveland, and the scholarly vision of Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. From his special train at a West Coast naval base, President Roosevelt, carrying his party's banner for a fourth term, accepts the nomination, addressing the convention by radio. I have already indicated to you why I accept the nomination which you have offered me, in spite of my desire to retire to the quiet of private life. You in this convention are aware of what I have sought to gain for the nation, and you have asked me to continue. What is the job before us in 1944? First, to win the war, to win it fast, to win it overwhelmingly. Secondly, to form worldwide international organizations and to arrange to use the armed forces of the sovereign nations of the world to make another world war impossible within the foreseeable future. And third, to build an economy for our returning veterans and for all Americans, which will provide employment and decent standards of living. The people of the United States will decide this fall whether they wish to turn over this 1944 job this worldwide job to inexperienced or immature hands, to those who opposed land lease and international cooperation against the forces of aggression and tyranny, until they could read the polls of popular sentiment, or whether they wish to leave it to those who saw the danger from abroad who met it head on, and who now have seized the offensive and carried the war to its present stages of success. To those who by international conferences and united actions have begun to build that kind of common understanding and cooperative experience which will be so necessary in the world to come. Back in Chicago, candidates are placed in nomination for the Vice Presidency of the United States. On the first ballot, the present incumbent, Henry A. Wallace, shows plenty of strength. Manpower Commissioner Paul V. McNutt, himself a candidate, watches a demonstration for another vice presidential possibility, Senator Scott Lucas of Illinois. But on the second ballot, Senator Harry S. Truman of Missouri is nominated as the running mate for FDR, polling 1,031 votes. Permanent Chairman Jackson brings him forward to receive the plaudits of the crowd. Now it's up to the American people. Senator Truman, Democratic vice presidential nominee, relaxes at his Independence, Missouri home. Neighbors congratulate him on his convention success. 
With his daughter Margaret and his wife Bess, he reads letters from friends wishing him well in the coming campaign. While this happy trio rests after the convention, the senator's political rival is welcome to Albany, New York. Governor Dewey greets his running mate in the coming race, Governor Bricker of Ohio. The candidates confer on the campaign program and discuss the Republican platform. The two governors feel confident of Republican success.